From the moment we're conceived to the day we take our last breath, science and the way we use it touches every one of us. Science has given immense power to save and nurture life. But the pace of change is so great that we don't often take time to stop and appreciate how far we've come. That's why I want to share with you 10 of the most important scientific advances of our time and reveal some of the things that might just lie ahead. At the end of the program, I'll be asking you to vote for the advance you think has done the most to change your world. It's had a massive impact on our society. It's really changed your life, hasn't it? So you're the perfect bionic woman. Yeah. <laughs> and the winner, well, it's up to you. For much of my career in medicine, X-rays were the most effective way of looking inside the human body. But they didn't give a particularly clear image of all the organs beyond our bones. MRI scanning changed all that. Engineers first used MRI to look inside metals. Now we're able to see directly into living tissues, and that's given amazing new insights into the most complicated organ in the human body. I find it really rather humbling that this space this inanimate object, this brain, was once the place where somebody felt angry, felt sad, and loved. And the extraordinary thing is that until quite recently, we had no idea how it was really working. Exciting research at the University of Cambridge is using the MRI scanner to see how the mind works. Robert, hello. Nice to see you. In the scanner next door, is a willing volunteer I've never met. I want you to face this way. All right, and not to look in the window. Don't look in the window. So I can't see your subject. By asking some simple yes or no questions, I'm going to try to find out a bit about him or her. If the person in the scanner is trying to convey a yes, you're going to see a bright red area of activity around his premotor cortex, the supplementary the motor area, right at the top in the middle of the head, yeah. If the person in the scanner is trying to convey a no, um, what you'll see is the same area of the brain will be lighting up, but it'll be a, a blue-greeny colour. Are you a man? There you go. I'm pretty confident that this person is conveying a yes at this stage. Are you over six foot high? He's now got a green area, so this is, is signalling a no answer which would mean that actually this person, this man, is not six foot high. He's shorter than six foot. We can't actually see the brain think yes or no. That would be too difficult even for an MRI machine. What our volunteer was asked to do was to imagine playing tennis when he wants to say yes. And when he does, the area of the brain which deals with movement, his motor cortex, shows increased activity. And that is easy for the MRI to see. And this is our last question. Do you have facial hair? Again, a uh, pretty obvious activation. I would say that this guy's either got a beard or a moustache. Hi. Thank you so much. Good I'm Robert Winston. How do you do? Well, you're certainly not six foot high. That's, we got that right. One recent study using this technique has given us an insight into communication with some patients in what was thought to be a permanent vegetative state. We've seen a patient recently, a road traffic injury, who'd actually been in that situation for five years. Uh, and he was able to use this technique to convey yes and no responses to us. It's certainly not, not the case for all patients, but we, we now know there are a, a subgroup of these patients who probably can do more than we think they can. It's quite scary, isn't it? Don't you think, do you not find that really quite, um, quite amazing, but also sort of very on the edge of... Of, of our humanity, isn't it? It is. I mean, it, it is something that, that many people find um, you know, quite difficult to, to think about the idea that you could be trapped inside your, your body and unable to communicate. And, you know, hopefully, we've found a way that some of these patients can, can get, around that, uh, get around that issue. 
And essentially what you're measuring is changes in blood flow. We're basically looking at the areas of the brain that are working hardest. They're drawing blood, which is delivering mm -hmm. uh, oxygen, uh, and that's what we're measuring. I mean, I couldn't look at somebody with this machine and say, he thinks I'm a complete moron. No, I mean, that might be true, but at least you won't know that. That's a good thing. <laughs> Undoubtedly, the MRI machine has been the most important way of seeing how our brain works, and that alone qualifies it as one of the most significant advances in the last 50 years.